Good morning, and welcome to all as we gather on this third Sunday after Epiphany, a season when we celebrate the way in which God appeared to the wise men through the Christ child. Um, as you probably know by now, the Executive Council acted on the recommendation of the main council of churches by suspending in-person worship to the end of January. It is our hope that we will be able to return to in-person worship as early as February. We will keep you posted. My thanks to the worship team which coordinates these services, and thanks as well to the musicians who offer such inspiration for our time together, uh, especially to Greg Hall for that rousing uh, prelude that you just enjoyed. Our liturgist this morning is Warren Bailey. Our thanks for the donation of flowers which beautify the sanctuary this morning. As is the case with the Sunday morning worship service, Coffee with Friends is suspended through the month of January. The trustees will hold a Zoom meeting this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. Let us join now for uh, a time for the child in all of us. In our scripture today, Jesus returns to his hometown, Nazareth where he is offered to, where is he, he is invited to offer the message. He's asked kind of to be the guest speaker at the synagogue. What was the first thing he did? The first thing he did was to get uh, scripture, to get a passage from the Bible, from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. And here's a little different translation that may make it a little more understandable what that passage says. God's spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burden and the battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. Jesus was led by the spirit to his hometown to give a message in his home synagogue. And uh, Jesus, in the process, found his sense of purpose. And where did that sense of purpose come from? It came from the Bible. It came through the reading of scripture. And that's true for all of us as well. We find our sense of purpose through the Bible, through the reading of scripture as well. And that's why it is that every Sunday, everything that we do, our prayers, our music, our message, Everything is shaped around the Bible reading for that day so that all of us can have a clear sense of our sense of purpose. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. Today is a joy day of rejoicing. It is it's a time, time to, celebrate. to celebrate. Jesus offers us a plan of action. No longer, longer are we are trapped, trapped wondering what we, what should, we be should be doing. Jesus speaks to us of freedom, release from captivity, recovery of sight. Jesus outlines the kind of disciples that are needed in God's world. Uh, let's join in uh, hymn number 111, When Morning Gilds the Skies.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Leading and God, lead, leading and God, guiding Father, you have opened the doors to us for true service. We are encouraged to become involved in ministries of peace and justice. The light of promise is reflected in your spirit, which rests in each one of us. Get us ready to serve you. Guide our lives as we learn more of what you had have us do. Amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. The, care of our, the chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. It is a joy that Debbie has been declared by her doctor to be in remission. Sandy asked for prayers for her cousin Jason's family at the loss of his dad, David. Prayers for all those across the country who are dealing with weather-related hardships. Ongoing prayers for Max, <coughs> Gloria, Kathy, Johan, Alan, and Selena, Warren II, Dave, Dot, Charity, Hope, Sandy, David, Cindy, and Virgil. Prayers as well for Jean and Neil, Marriott, Marcia and Robert, Frank and Anita, Michael, Mitch, Katie, Anna, Scott, June, Rick, Barbara, Nancy, Harry, and Bill. And finally, we ask for prayers for Kevin, Bobby, John, Lee and Rita, Christine, Carol, Larry, Courtney, and Jean and Bruce. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones. May they all be comforted knowing that they are in our prayers as the new year begins. Every thought is a prayer and everyone is appreciated. Let us join together now for our pastoral prayer. God of power and might, we give thanks for the leading of the Holy Spirit which guides us in the same way that it did for Jesus that day in Nazareth so long ago. As the Spirit led him to pick up the Bible and find a sense of purpose in your word, so may, may we be led by the same Spirit to find our sense of purpose through the revelation of Scripture. May we walk in the paths that you set before us and find guidance in the truths that you offer to us. God, we give thanks for the hopeful signs that the latest surge of the Omicron variant is showing signs of subsiding in portions of the country and the world. May this trend continue, and may we be vigilant to do those things that will continue the downward trend of infections. We lift up in prayer those that we name in our joys and concerns, and we ask that you offer healing, strength, encouragement, and hope as the need exists. As we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. Let us pray. As we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. from evil. For thine Amen. is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen.
The Congregational Church of Wells is profoundly grateful for the generous financial support of so many in the midst of these difficult times. We appreciate your commitment to the ministries of this church. We pray that we might minister faithfully as we seek to share the love of Christ with all. Today's liturgy is taken from Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. <coughs> the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled 
in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Our thanks once again to Greg Hall, who did a uh, improvisation on Ferris Lord Jesus, as uh, David Hollis is under the weather this morning, was not able to uh, sing the anthem. So thank you, Greg, for that. Let's join together in prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word you have given to us and for the gift of the Spirit, which enables that word to bear fruit within our hearts. Be with us now, guide us and lead us, and help us to know how you are calling us in the week ahead. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. The last few Sundays, we have once again been inspired by the events of the life of Jesus after his birth. We celebrated Epiphany Sunday, where the wise men from the East were led by a star to the Christ child, and in the process experienced a manifestation of God through their encounter with the newborn Messiah. Then we celebrated the baptism of Jesus, where we were told that the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove and a voice come from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The story continues with Jesus being tempted by the devil, who tries to encourage Jesus to use his powers in ways that are not faithful to God's will. After Jesus rebuffs all the temptations that the devil offers, the devil leaves and basically says, I'll be back. Then we arrive at the passage that you heard a few moments ago, where Jesus is led by the same spirit that appeared at his baptism to return to his hometown of Nazareth in northern, northern Israel in Galilee. He is invited to be the guest speaker at the synagogue where he grew up. He is handed a scroll containing a passage from the book of Isaiah, and he reads, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he begins his message by saying, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All these events tell a wonderful story for mystery, miraculous events, and high drama. But through it all, you see the hand of God fulfilling God's purposes in the events surrounding the life of Jesus. And in the process, we are encouraged to walk in the paths of Jesus to find our purpose in the living of our lives. As we talk about living and ministering with a sense of purpose, as we seek to discern God's purposes for our lives, let's pick up where we left off last week with Paul's letter to the Corinthians. You may recall that he was speaking of how God provides us with spiritual gifts which empower us to minister in Christ's name. 
Paul continues in that passage by using the human body as a metaphor for the church. He boldly says, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are all different parts of the body of Christ, each depending on the other to enable the body to function as a whole. Paul is speaking directly to us here at the Congregational Church of Wells, and indeed he is speaking to all churches which seek to find their sense of purpose through the Spirit of Christ. In short, our purpose and the purpose of our ministries derive from the fact that we, sh that we all <coughs> seek to be the body of Christ, the very presence of Christ in our community. Now, to, to say that we strive to be the presence of Christ is a pretty big deal. It means that we trust in a power, the power of the Holy Spirit to enable our ministries, and that we need to depend on the Spirit in all that we do. That, I believe, is the message behind the miracles and the healings that Jesus is said to have performed. It was the Holy Spirit which enabled Jesus to do what he did. Likewise, the Holy Spirit enables us to do what we do. It means that we are to be a gracious community, reflecting God's love to others in the same way that Jesus did. It means that we look at the world from the perspective of a different authority. Jesus called it the kingdom of God. We are called to trust in God's power rather than the power of the world. And we are called to be a resurrection community, placing our hope in the Easter message that new life, new creation, and new beginnings can come from death, despair, and hopelessness. These are just a few of the implications of what it means to be the body of Christ, the presence of Christ, and how that identity can shape our sense of purpose for our lives. When Jesus quotes Isaiah in today's passage, he uses the passage to, to help define the sense of purpose of his ministry. Ultimately, Jesus is saying that he is the fulfillment of the Hebrew promise of the year of Jubilee. The Jubilee year was a notion that every 50 years, slaves should be released, property should be returned to its original owners, and debt should be totally forgiven. Luke is saying that in Jesus, all those promises have come to pass. The year of the Lord's favor, the Jubilee year, has arrived. A new world is breaking into the old. And the purpose of Jesus is to bring that new world into being. As churches, in the name of Jesus, we are here to work toward the purpose of making that new world a reality, a world where love matters more than possessions, a world where the poor are blessed, a world where the bonds of sin are released, a world where we can see the presence of God in our midst so that we are no longer blind to the activity of God around us, a world where the powerful no longer oppress the powerless, but where all are free in God's sight. Jesus came with the purpose of creating a new world, and that needs to be our purpose as well. The writings of the Apostle Paul and the Gospel of Luke help us to get a sense of the many implications of seeking to live out of the purpose of Christ. But how does this happen? And what is needed to make Christ's purpose a reality? The following story may help us to get a better understanding. The First Brethren Church in Sarasota, Florida had, had a groundbreaking ceremony for a new church building back in 1957. Instead of the silver spade tradition with one dignitary turning the first sod, <coughs> the church brought along an old plow, the kind our forebears used to break the first sod on the prairie. First, they hit the minister to the prow. She couldn't budge it. 
not an inch. Then they hit the church staff with the same result. So they tied a long rope to the plow and added all the church leaders. Still, no luck. All right, someone yelled. Everybody grab hold and pull. And so the whole congregation, women, men, children, seniors, everybody pulled the rope together. And the plow sliced through the ground to start the new church building. <coughs> if we are to participate in the if we are to participate in the purposes of Jesus, we, all of us, need to pull together, in spite of our differences, finding our unity in the Christ who calls us forward to great purposes. The Holy Spirit led Jesus to find his sense of purpose through God's word, and so can we. Let us listen for God's call in our lives and devote ourselves to that call the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, which leads us and dwells within us. And now you have been called and anointed. You have been strengthened and enlightened. You have become one body in Christ. Now go to spread joy and liberation in word and in deed to all the world. Amen.